Good morning. Uh, I just want to draw your attention to two verses at the end of Romans 8. Romans chapter 8, very familiar verses. Verses 38 and 39. Paul writes, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers, nor height nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Paul was a man of certainty. He, he didn't deal much with hypotheticals. Uh, he had a passion for the truth. His life was shaped by the things that he knew to be true and was convinced of. And in these two verses, we see one of those truths. He begins in verse 38, For I am convinced he's persuaded of a truth that is trustworthy. And when Paul says he's convinced, it's more than just a logical agreement that something is true. There's more to it than that. It's a persuasion that so affects his life that it changes him. It changes how he thinks about life and about God. I don't know if you've ever come to a a truth like that that hits you and becomes new and fresh and just changes, in a sense, your worldview. This is one of those truths that Paul's talking about here. And a cursory look over the two verses, you would think that it's the truth of the love of God. But if you look more carefully, it's not just the truth of the love of God, but it's the fact that nothing could separate him from the love of God. It would be one thing if the love of God could come and go, wax and wane, increase, decrease, But what amazes Paul so much in these two verses that he could burst into this doxology, really that's the second half of chapter 8, was the fact that he realized nothing could separate him from this love. The word separate literally describes driving a wedge between something. To divide something, to cut the connection between two things. Paul used this same word back in verse 35, Who will separate us from the love of Christ? And that's a rhetorical question demanding an answer. No one. No one and no thing can terminate the connection of God's love between him and his elect. And to illustrate his point, he runs the gamut of things that in theory could could potentially separate him from God's love. You can see them listed here in verse 38. Death, the thing you and I are least in control of, the thing that will cause a lot of separations in our lives, separation from this physical life, separation from each other, the spirit's separation from the body. But there's one thing death will not separate, and that's the believer from God's love. Life. Life in this fallen world, life in these mortal bodies that are prone to sin will not be able to separate us. Life with all its uncertainties, injustices, anxieties, sorrows will not be able to separate us. He refers to angels and principalities and powers. These are all terms that describe the spiritual forces of the unseen supernatural realm. In an evil sense, it's demons. It's those spiritual forces of wickedness, Paul describes in Ephesians 6, that threaten us, threaten to undo us. As much as they threaten, they'll never be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Things present or things to come, this is with regard to time. It encompasses every event between now and eternity future. No circumstance, situation, trial, confrontation, failure on your part will be able to separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Height nor depth 
So just like the spectrum of time, the spectrum of space, nothing in the heights above and the depths below will be able to separate us. Above the earth, on the earth, under the earth, nothing. And to end this list, he adds this catch-all phrase, nor any other created thing. That is to say, anything that exists outside of the being of God. And here's the point. God is the creator of anything that exists outside of himself. And as such, he controls that. And of all the things that he's created, he will never allow one of those created things to have the opportunity to separate us from his love. He, the uncreated, all-powerful God, powerful God, is the creator and sustainer of all things. And as the creator and sustainer, he has sovereignly determined that not only his love rests upon us, but that nothing ever have the opportunity to take that love away from us. He says in verse 39, none of these things will be able to separate us. That phrase, will be able, is one word. It's the Greek word dunamis, sometimes translated power. Literally, none of these things will separate you from the love of God because none of them have the power to. None of them will because none of them can separate you. And it begs the question, what is it about the love of God that makes it so inseparable from us? The answer to that is at the end of verse 39 which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The reason we will never be able to be separated from the love of God is because it's rooted in Christ Jesus. In one sense, we'll never be able to be separated from it because we didn't do anything to earn it. We didn't do anything to deserve it. The love of God flows to us through Christ because of what he did on our behalf. And he so secured the Father's love for us, he secured it so much that nothing has the power to separate us from it. Ever. This was a truth that Paul was absolutely convinced of, so much so that it changed the course of his life. In 2 Corinthians 5.14, he said, the love of Christ controls me. Literally, it holds me together. It surrounds me and binds me in on every side. Are we as convinced as Paul is of the love of God? Are we as certain that nothing in heaven, on earth, or under the earth will ever be able to separate us from it? Do we rest knowing this truth? Is it so fixed in our minds that it governs every aspect of our life? After all, who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Just as it's written, for your sake, we are being put to death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. But in all these things, we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us.